Good afternoon, traders. This is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com, and this is the futures market outlook for the week starting with February 18th, 2019. Let's begin with the indices. And the first chart that we're going to look at is the Imini &E Dow, and this is the weekly chart. Quite an impressive week. We've rallied. It was a tremendous week to the upside. We've almost reached the peak of December. Peak of December is 26.09D. And we're almost there. Uh, we're less than 90 points away. Uh, 25901 is where we have closed on Friday. Now, keep in mind that the U.S. markets will be closed on Monday. However, uh, markets will open as scheduled on Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern. We have about less than two hours away. It's 4.05 p.m. Eastern time right now, and it's Sunday. And uh, the markets will open at 6 p.m. Eastern and uh, they will run in the overnight trading session. Uh, London market, European markets will uh, be open and the market will close at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. So it is just the U.S. market that is going to be closed. All right, so let's get back to the e mini Dow. The e mini Dow is about 90 points away from achieving a new high uh, and that is by taking out the December high right here this is this is december 3rd this is the week that actually put us into this range right here into the 24 200 before we broke down and we have violated quite a few levels of support but very strong reversal to the upside took us exactly into these prior highs now the fact that we had a really great price velocity uh to the upside uh, and we finish so strong on the week, this may be a good indication that this week uh, we may be, again, heading higher, trying to take out this pr prior highs. And you could see here a little bit of noise with these uh, peaks right here with these topping tails. But nonetheless, we still have uh, at least uh, one big push into the 90 area, like I said, about 90 points up. And then we have another uh, another tradable void all the way to 26,272. Uh, and this is again looking very bullish. Now take a look at at these weeks, and we have been rallying since December 24th, the week of December 24th. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight week rally so far. So again, is the price going to slow down? Well, depending on how the price closed for the week, this is a pretty strong indication that we may be heading higher. Obviously, pullbacks are imminent, and uh, uh, we're going to be looking at the one-hour chart for some immediate, uh, immediate price action, um, uh, a price action uh, action uh, that we can take a look at to start the week off. Uh, but nonetheless, due to the fact that we closed so strong, we can still expect a continuation higher. Let's move on to the daily chart. Daily chart almost digesting these prior highs into the 25,900, as you can see right here. So we had a high, lower high, lower high, equal highs before we actually, uh, and I would say this was more of a shakeout than anything else looking back at prior price action. But uh, nonetheless, uh, um, when when we're looking at the monthly chart, let me just give this a little bit of time here because I did have to rebuild all my charts. I uh, from the last update, uh, we did uh, I did have uh, I did have an issue with charting. All right. So when you look on the monthly chart, basically the trend is uninterrupted. So we came in to the 34 SMA. We have reversed, pushed again higher, and we're trading right into this area. And you would say that this is resistance right here, but because we have closed so strong on the weekly chart, uh, we may be heading higher again. And one other thing is that on Friday, we had a quite an impressive rally. And this is one uh, the one hour chart and once again this happened in the overnight trading session uh, a lot of setups uh, um, for especially for day traders um, and for day trading have been setting up at two or three o'clock in the morning and in fact take a look at this pullback buy right here that triggered into six o'clock 
Uh, also here, the pullback buy into one o'clock and two o'clock continuation. So if you look at the left-hand side of the chart, you see that most of the triggers have happened in the overnight trading session, leaving uh, pretty much a very uh, uh, shallow trading environment for the New York trading session trader, uh, meaning that you would have to wait for some sort of a pullback to determine your risk in order to uh, leg into some trade. So in uh, some cases, it was rather difficult to get into these uh, to get into these moves. So um, one thing that uh, we need to look for uh, moving forward is a pullback at least into the 25,700 to 650 for a continuation higher or uh, worst case scenario, shallower pullback back to 740 zone. So this is the m and Dow. Let's move on to the m and S&P 500. And uh, we're going to start again with the weekly charts. And again, very strong, uh, very strong finish to the week. Last week, um, we closed at 2777. Uh, this is the December high into uh, in December 3rd, uh, the 2815. We still have room for a continuation higher. The fact that we closed this week pretty strong on a very strong note, it means that once we uh, continue this uh, move up, we may we do have room to 2800 and into the these highs right here of 2815 and 2820. So the directional bias is still going to be long to the long side. All right, let's move on to the daily chart. Daily chart uh, consolidation for a couple of days into the 200 symbol moving average, digesting the prior resistance from the left hand side from December 3rd and also from November, uh, mid-November, November 16th, and we project it higher. Note the close on Friday is extremely strong, which is a good indication for a possible continuation higher back into the 2800 and 2810. Uh, let's move on to uh, NASDAQ. They're all very, very strong. All these uh, indices uh, have been super strong NASDAQ. Again, uh, dealing with the resistance. Now, keep in mind this is the December. This is the December third. Although it is having a bit of a struggle uh, pushing uh, over this 200 simple moving average. Note the fact that it's still very, very close to topping out here. Not topping out, but close to the peak into the 71.37. And this is the December third. So as you can see, the e mini Dow, S and P 500, and now Russ, uh, and now uh, Nasdaq have very little to achieve this high right here. So uh, we still have room. So we closed at uh, 70, 70.64.5. This high is into the uh, 71.34. So not that far from achieving full resistance uh, right here. So one of the things that I wanna mention is that these resistance levels are also going to put some pressure on price. So as they're trying to move higher, they're still going to be encountering these encountering these bands of resistance that may push the price lower in fact to uh, a bit steeper pullback i'm not looking and the fact that we're witnessing this rally i don't think that this market is really ready to take on a big dive to the downside and i think that even if we get a smaller type of pullback this is going to represent a really good trading opportunity for some swing or really good opportunities for some swing trading uh, in the stocks, obviously, as well, some stocks are getting quite extended, uh, but uh, also in the futures indices. Uh, so again, for NASDAQ, we're trading into resistance. We're still struggling with the 200 simple moving average. We uh, pulled back very, very little uh, towards the end of the trading session, of, like very sensitive pullback that's not even a pullback this is just a few ticks to the downside but we're still struggling so we need to see uh we need to see uh next week um meaning this week uh we need to see the 7100 taken out and full throttle back into the high uh most likely into the 7130 and continuation into the 7200 may be possible at this level now let's talk about Russell. Russell has been the trendsetter since last year and Russell has had a really great ascension uh, and uh, has been also our market gauge. So from uh, last year, February, when the volatility has started, 
Russell was the first index that was showing signs of weakness and was the first index to actually start to pull back. Um, Russell right now um, has been one of the strongest and um, needless to say that you know the reversal though came two days later because it still had uh, a big f a, a, a bit of a flush to the downside but nonetheless it pretty much bottomed out uh, on December 26th and it had this really big move to the upside resistance from December 3rd now you could you saw very well that the mini Dow uh, Nasdaq and SM, the S&P 500 are pretty much trading below their December 3rd levels. Now, not Russell. Russell has been not only, has only blasted through this level, but it is into an acceleration move higher back to this 1587, which is a confluence zone. We also have this prior peak high from November 8th, and we also have the 200 simple moving average. So, uh, moving forward, I still think because we still tr have closed uh, the, the day, on uh, Friday, super strong. We still may have a continuation higher back at least into the 1587 uh, to 1590 for this uh, for this upcoming week. So it's going to be a short week, uh, but don't forget that the future indices are still going to be traded in the overnight trading session today. All right. So what can we expect moving forward from Russell? Well, like I said, a continuation into the 1580s at least. If we are going to pull back, the next pullback that I'm looking for is that we may be getting, um, we the next support level that I'm gonna look at is the 1534. Uh, as you could see from where we actually have uh, executed a really nice rotation here on January 4th, uh, we have pretty much moved higher and we're uh, if you look at the chart we've been riding the 10 exponential moving average so uh, that's a sign of power trend so we still need to take out the 200 moving average but as you can see the moving averages are starting to fan out and this is a sign of power trending higher all right so let's move on to oil oil has had a really um, big move uh, lately to the upside I'm gonna start uh, I'm gonna start with the weekly chart okay so the weekly chart is very interesting because uh, we have been basing here uh, at the $52 level for quite a few weeks so actually for four weeks uh, we actually pinched in this week and a lot of traders were uh, actually seeing the price of oil moving a bit lower and actually if technically if we would have breached the $51 level we could have seen um, we could have seen $50 and 30 cents, in fact, $50 and 20, 20 cents, and uh, even steeper prices for oil. But oil uh, balanced really well off of this 51 and change level and has pushed to the upside, trading above, uh, um, trading above prior week's high and taking the, actually taking two week prior highs out and continuation on higher. Now, it is to be noted the fact that this is a strong level of resistance that is driving from this descending 20 simple moving average and also uh, from these prior pivot lows from uh, October and that is October 2017 from which the price from which the price has rotated higher. So if this level is going to be digested in a bullish manner, then we may see an acceleration higher to the next level of resistance, which is the $58. And also, uh, it does have a tradable void all the way to $60. So the most important thing to watch for this week is to see um, if the price is going to slow down. If the price is going to slow down, we can possibly see a correction back into the $55 or $54.70. That is the next pullback area that I'm gonna be watching if this is going to play out. If we continue to remain strong and if we take out this prior week's high, which is last week's high, then we may start an acceleration higher back into the 58 and back into 58 and 59 dollars 
All right, let's move on to gold. Gold has had, again, a pretty nice choppy, but consistent move to the upside. This is the weekly chart again. Last week, we had this inside bar uh, within this prior bar, which is a pretty wide range bar right here, and uh, sort of like a rocket bar starting to trade above this uh, 23 level that actually brought more buying pressure that pushed the price into the 1325. And this is the close from uh, from last week. We still have room for a continuation higher, in fact, into this high right here from the uh, beginning of the year, uh, in fact, from two weeks ago into the 1331. We're, the fact that the price is getting very jittery right here is, the, is the, the fact that we are running into this cluster and this cluster is putting a lot of pressure on price through this level. I have gold as a long term, longer term trade. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to bring here the monthly chart. Let me just give it a little bit of time again. And uh, let's give it 20 years. Okay. Uh, so the one thing that I like about this pattern in gold, and like I said, this is a longer term trade for me, is the fact that we've had the low back in 2016. We have moved up, reached resistance, pulled back, determined, uh, and actually formed a higher low. And from this prior bottom, so we have a temporary bottom at the 1044, we have a rising bottom into the 1125 zone, and we have a rising bottom right here into 1165. Now, if we break over uh, the 1550 to 1560 area, we can actually talk about uh, a bigger uh, breakout to the upside that may bring prices of 1400 and even higher into the end of the year. So I have gold. Gold is going to be a long-term trade for me. So I'm looking for the price to accelerate higher. Obviously, we had a pretty strong, uh, we had a pretty strong close. I'm going to go back to the weekly chart. And again, if this week we're going to uh, trigger a continuation, and if we're going to trade over 1326, uh, then we may see uh, price uh, accelerate quite fast into this high of 1325.8. Uh, and in fact, uh, trying to break this high and accelerate higher. So directional bias for this week for gold, it is higher. All right, let's take a look at bonds. And uh, this is the weekly chart in bonds. Uh, you can see right here that we had a shallow pullback. Note the fact that we've been riding on this 10 EMA and we're trying to break out over this 146.30 level. It, it means 147 is actually, uh, 147 is the breakout level for me, but I put an alert a little bit earlier, so give me a heads up on some intraday price action that I wanna take part in. All right, so what we have here is like a, a mini range into the 147, and this is a weekly. Uh, so again, if we're gonna trade above this prior high, into this week, which is 146.30, is exactly where I have my alert on, we could see the price continue higher back into the 147 and back into the 149, okay, which was the last, which which actually was um, uh, the high from December 31st. All right, let's move on to the daily chart. Daily chart gives you a better uh, idea of what I'm looking at. So you can see the low, rising bottom, rising bottom right here, and this is the breakout zone into the 146.30 to 147. We can expect prices to accelerate higher into the 148 and even higher than that. So I do have another target into the 150. All right, so this is bond. Let's take a quick look at copper. <clears throat> and I am going to start uh, going to start with the monthly chart in copper. Just gonna give it a few more years. <laughs> All right, so copper has been consolidating here for a very long, long time. In fact, since August of last year, and you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months in which we are really struggling to break above this uh, this high right here of two dollars and eighty seven eighty uh, eighty eight cents. Once we break above these highs right here, I think that uh, there's 
gonna be a pretty good effect of a push higher over three dollars and i think that three is not gonna be uh the target here but we're gonna have a much higher target into uh into the two dollars uh, into the three dollars and thirty cents okay uh Again, weekly chart, uh, double bottom right here. Uh, the price has accelerated a little bit um, um, overall, uh, getting close to the big breakout zone. Uh, the one thing that is very constructive in copper is the fact that for the last two weeks, we've been holding this uh, 2.75 area, which is very important. Uh, it is deriving from a prior pivot high and it is a minor support level. It is also trading on the 10, on the 34, 10, uh, 10 EMA, 34 simple and 20 simple moving average right here. So we we're having a really strong uh, point of reference right here, strong support zone. If we continue to blast this week, and I love the shape of this candle, it's a really nice hammer here, really nice pin. Uh, if we trade over $2.82.16, we may be pushing higher. So this means that price velocity may continue at least into the two. 0.85 before we are actually trying to digest this high in 287.95 uh, to push to the upside. So I really like the way um, copper is shaping up right now. Let's take a quick look at the daily chart. Daily chart is into the 200 simple moving average. And uh, as you can see, we, we have not taken out prior week's high. So we're still, we're still struggling. But nonetheless, it had an impressive day on Friday and it had a really nice big dynamic move to the upside but it still needs to digest the 285 zone so th nonetheless you could see the chop into the 285 and once it's going to get here bam that's going to be the explosion to the upside all right let's talk about natural gas natural gas is a trade that I'm also in and um, again, I see it as a longer term trade. I'm gonna give a little bit more time here. All right, so this is support right here. And this has been support since 2016. In fact, since July 2016, we have been punching through this line several times. We have accelerated higher into the month of November, coming back down into the 250 zone and we're waiting here to see if we're going to get more price acceleration into this uh into this week and into this month now this is a monthly chart not impressive here so the month is still not over um we still have a couple of weeks left uh but again we tapped onto the support level and we're still gravitating here nonetheless we'd had a constructive move on uh friday but before we get into the daily let's take a quick look at the weekly i like the way this doji is shaping up and into this following week uh if we trade over two dollars and seven four four five that is going to be the trigger for higher i will look to add to my current position like i said i'm trying to build a position i have very very little uh in this position right now so i'm really wanting to add some more uh, either on a dip lower or on this reversal uh, on a weekly. Uh, the reversal is not going to come very technically, so it's not going to be a textbook reversal because we're still trading below the 200 simple moving average, but it's just I'm just trying to build out the position. All right, and this is going to get that push, that velocity that may get the price a little bit higher here, at least into the 282. Okay. Um, and this is pretty much all for tonight. Uh, I hope you all have a great Monday uh, and enjoy the time off. It's time. It's a great time to review uh, some of your strategies, to revisit some of the trades that you have executed uh, last week. And uh, it is definitely a great, great time to do some chart analysis and let's go back and uh, review. All right, um, if you're interested in joining uh, our trading room, uh, feel free to visit our website, tradeoutloud.com forward slash uh, live trading room. We day trade futures 
and we swing trade futures and stocks. Our schedule every day is from 4, uh, it, I'm sorry, it's from 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. Eastern. And um, if you would like more information, visit our website or you can email us at info at tradeoutloud.com. We also have futures classes. If you want to learn how to day trade or swing trade futures, you could also visit our website under the educational tab. We have a new class that is going to start on March 25th. And uh, if you don't want to wait until March 25th for the day trading class, you could actually register early and we will uh, provide you with a manual and access to all the recordings. Plus, you will dive into our trading room uh, as soon as you sign up and uh, then you could retake the class live on March 25th. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have an amazing, profitable trading week and I'll see you Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Have a great night, everyone.